it's a really interesting conversation. I'm not sure how much you get this response, but a lot of the time when I hear someone speak about a disease, and perhaps because of the statistics you just offered, often people go, ah, oh, unfortunately, this is just a part of aging. Now, I know this is something that you've already said is not something that uh, you believe is necessarily a, a strong or, or, or leading cause. But it blows my mind how often people just take it as a way of life. Okay, Parkinson's disease has been around. My grandma's got it. Someone I know has got it. Hopefully, I'll try and avoid it. But they feel almost as though they have no power to control how much influence they have over whether or not they're, they're going to get it. Yeah, I, I couldn't disagree more. I, I don't think these are natural consequences of aging. I, I don't think the baseline is that one, two, three percent of people over 65 are supposed to get Parkinson's disease. No more than I believe that one in eight women should have breast cancer or one in eight women have prostate cancer. We need to ask why so many people are getting breast cancer. Why are so many people getting prostate cancer? How could have early humans survived if one in eight of women were getting breast cancer? Um, you know, uh, in the U.S., no president has ever been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. No president until Ronald Reagan was ever diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. We've had longevity for long periods of time. Um, you know, in 1800s, there were, you know, ben, in, in the United States, Ben Franklin, George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, living into their 80s, into their 90s. And none of them were having these diseases. Uh, and I'm sure the same is likely the case in Australia. Um, these, there are reasons why these diseases are increasingly common. And I think if you look really, really hard, uh, we know that it's not genetics for the vast majority of individuals. And so that really leaves the environment as its uh, main culprit. Yeah. And this is something that I've, I've heard you speak on um, in, in a whole heap of depth. And this is something which is both incredibly frustrating, makes me incredibly angry. But I think the flip side of that is leaves me feeling uh, uh, relatively passionate and with a whole lot of hope that this can be a disease of the past inspired by yourself. And uh, th that's perhaps a, a nice little entryway into uh, what I was hoping to form a lot of the conversation around, which is the, the, the main causes but also what we can do to prevent it and what people with the disease currently can do to either slow the process of development or, or you know, hopefully halt it, cure it. I'll let you be the guide. But um, I know the cause issue is, is one that's a, a really interesting conversation. I mean, the development of the disease, as you've just said, has been so rapid in that, what was it, 130 years? If in I've 200 years, date. we've gone from six to six million. Six to six million in 200 years. Um, so what are the causes? I'll tell you what I think are the three most important uh, causes of Parkinson's. I could be wrong, uh, but these are this is what I think, and they're environmental. Um, so number one uh, are certain pesticides. There's a pesticide called Paraquat. It kills the weeds that round up can't. It uh, was created in the 1950s, commercialized in the 1960s. It's considered the most toxic weed killer ever created. Uh, one sip can kill, according to the United States Environmental Protection Agency. It's been used to commit homicide and suicide in over 30 countries, including China, has banned it. But the United States, neither the United States nor Australia, to my knowledge, has banned it. So this pesticide is sprayed on corn, sprayed on cotton, sprayed on vineyards, including vineyards 30 minutes from where I'm sitting in upstate New York. And my guess is it's sprayed um, in, on fields in Australia and perhaps, you know, it's growing season in Australia probably being sprayed right now. And I think along with it, the seeds of Parkinson's disease. Paraquat in epidemiological studies and human studies is associated with a 150% increased risk of developing Parkinson's. A 150% increased risk of developing Parkinson's. Numerous research, researchers uh, around the world have demonstrated that when you feed paraquat, paraquat to laboratory animals, they develop the clinical and pathological features of Parkinson's disease. But what's even more shocking is an expose from the British uh, journal called The Guardian from a year ago in which they looked at uh, records from the manufacturer of Paraquat, which is being sued in the United States and elsewhere, I, in my understanding, uh, for Parkinson's disease by people who use the chemical and subsequently developed Parkinson's disease. And they found out that the company knew about its ties to Parkinson's disease for over 50 years, for over 50 years, and hid it. They knew in the 1960s that when they fed paraquat in high doses to mice, to rats, and to rabbits, that they developed Parkinson's disease. 
So they knew before I was born that when they exposed three different, not one, not two, but three different species of mammals to paraquat, they developed the pathological features of Parkinson's disease. They didn't seek to withdraw their product. They didn't seek to introduce a safer version of their product. They sought to double down under a campaign to freedom to sell, a freedom to sell this toxic pesticide in the United States, a freedom to sell this toxic pesticide in Australia. So, um, the second uh, most important or second important environmental cause are, are dry cleaning chemicals, if you can believe it. Uh, one's called trichloroethylene. That's a really, really simple molecule. Your listeners know that water is made up of three atoms, H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Trichloroethylene is made up of six atoms, uh, two carbon atoms in black for those uh, watching, one hydrogen atom in white, and then three chlorine atoms in green, hence its name trichloroethylene. That and its sister compound, perchloroethylene, exactly the same molecule, except instead of having three chlorine atoms, it has four chlorine atoms, um, are widely used in dr dry cleaning, degreasing, and even decaffeinating coffee. Uh, these chemicals were ubiquitous uh, in the 1970s. It's estimated that 10 million Americans worked with these chemicals. Estimated that one in 12 workers in the United Kingdom worked with these uh, chemicals, akin to saying like everyone in retail working with. Uh, these chemicals. These chemicals are associated with a 500% increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. And when, when TCE trichloroethylene has been fed to laboratory animals, they too develop the clinical and pathological features uh, of, of Parkinson's disease. And you don't have to work with these chemicals. These chemicals contaminate the groundwater in the United States. They contaminate the groundwater in Australia. Um, and I think these chemicals, not only can you drink them, but they like radon, they can evaporate from contaminated groundwater and soil into your kids' schools, your workplaces, or your homes undetected. You can be breathing these chemicals uh, in. And the final major uh, environmental risk factor, I think, is air pollution, outdoor uh, ambient air pollution. Uh, in the United States, some of you may know that we had the Canadian wildfires this past summer, which turned the Big Apple of New York City uh, orange. And that level of air pollution is what was uh, uh, apparent on the streets of London in 1800 when Dr. Parkinson's describing the condition. That London fog had little to do with weather and everything to do with air pollution. And air pollution that he was experiencing in 1800 London was akin to what New York City uh, was experiencing this past summer or what Delhi, India and Beijing, China experience on a daily basis uh, today among the worst level of air pollution in the world. And there have been increasing number of studies linking air pollution uh, to Parkinson's disease. So the three major environmental causes, one, certain pesticides, especially a pesticide called paraquat, two, these dry cleaning chemicals known called trichloroethylene or perchloroethylene, um, and uh, outdoor air pollution.